Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. How many times have you wished with your Halloween props that you could make them work off of motion sensing so when somebody walks by, the prop starts to work? Uh, you, you've tried these step pads, they don't work, so you want, you want motion. So today I'm going to show you, real inexpensive for about maybe $10, $12, how you can add motion sensing to any prop using a motion sensor, of course, and a relay board. And here's your trigger cable. And this will also be able to do lights or motors. So stay tuned and I'll show you how we did all this. I belong to a couple Facebook pages that deal with uh, Halloween props, do-it-yourself props, and some of the questions that have been coming along lately have been, how can I take my prop and make it motion activated? Uh, some of the people, most of them, have said that they have like a Spirit Halloween Party City type prop, and they do have the Try Me port in the back where, you know, you can plug in one of these step pads, you know, this one's from Spirit Halloween. It ends in a 1 8 mono plug and you put it into the try me port there on the on the prop you step on this pad and it's supposed to work well <laughs> if you're very well familiar these may or may not work um, even in the store at spirit halloween you step on them to see what it's supposed to do and the demos don't even work so i figured well um, how about a multi-purpose one not only one that can work you know uh work off the trigger port but maybe something can power something besides the spirit halloween prop like a lights or motors so here's what we came up with uh in some of the past videos you've seen how i've used a, a motion sensor i've used the arduino and uh, <laughs> that's not right how we've used the motion sensor a relay board which is in here okay and an arduino to get things to work right well today we're not going to use an arduino this is all just wiring these are just components no programming necessary so what happens is when somebody walks in front of the motion sensor, it sends a signal to the relay board, and the relay board closes two contacts. Now, here I have a 1 8 mono plug on here, which would go into the, the trigger port of a Spear Halloween prop or, or similar prop and would make it run. But you could also uh, very easily wire this up so it would run a motor. It could run some lights. Uh, it, you, you can do quite a few things on here. You know, the motion sensor is adjustable, okay, so you can you know, figure out how long you want it to stay on and how long it gets triggered in between and how far the distance is. So, today, that's what we're going to be doing. So, stay tuned and we'll break this all down and I'll show you exactly how I did it. This is a real simple project, like I said at the beginning of the video. You don't need many components and except for the 3D printed case, for the uh, motion sensor, everything can be had through Amazon. Uh, the case for the motion sensor, you can make yourself, you know, you can actually put this in, tup you know, cut a hole in a small dollar store in, um, Tupperware type box and you can put that in or protect that from the weather. Uh, the, so we'll go, over, we'll go over the components here. Uh, we've got, we've got, we have, uh, a, this is the cable that is going to power everything. Okay, this could be once again got through Amazon. I'll put the link below. One end is a simple USB uh, connector that means it can go into a wool wart. Okay, or a battery pack. Okay, and the other end terminates in four connectors. Um, get those all spread out for you so you can see them there's um, red positive black negative and then there's a green and a white the green and a white are for your data uh, but we're not using this for any kind of uh, data transmission we only want the power so we're we really don't need those two all we need are the, the uh, red and the black we have two uh, lengths of cable here which are three conductor which will connect the motion sensor to the relay okay and then also from the relay out to whatever switch is going to activate the motions or uh, act whatever <laughs> whatever the motion sensor is going to activate when this relay kicks off 
this is what it does. And what we're going to connect it to right now is this 1 8 mono plug with screws so it's easy to get the wires in there. And this will fit into the trigger port of uh, like Spirit Halloween prop. So you can take a uh, non-motion sensored uh, prop from Spirit Halloween and you can turn it into something that's motion sensed instead of using a step pad. Okay, uh, we then have the project case which is about uh, two and a half inches by four inches which everything will fit into and the two most important parts are the relay board and the motion sensor. And if you watch any other videos you probably are familiar with these two but I'll go over them again. Okay, the motion sensor has three pins. Okay, positive, negative, okay, which takes a five volts in, and in the middle pin right here, when the motion is detected, it outputs five volts on this line, okay, and we're going to connect that to this relay board, who it has, you know, two terminals or positive, negative for five volts to power it, and then there is the sense input right here so when it senses five volts on here it activates the relay so is that making sense now so the motion sensor is going to kick out five volts it's going to go to here and it's going to make the relay click and then on the other end of the relay are your normal connections which is your common normally open and normally closed uh, which basically means normally open means that the connectors the, the switch as they sit are not closed so when the, the relay activates the contacts come together and something happens, triggering your prop. The other one is normally closed, which means um, the contacts are always contacted and when the relay activates, it separates them. Very rarely do you use that, that setup. It's usually the normally open. So when the relay activates, um, get a switches come into contact and that's how we're going to do it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some of this stuff aside. And what we need to do is we need to mount the relay board in the case. So the first thing we'll do is we will pop open the project case. Okay, and we're going to use some painter's tape, which is always our favorite here to mark things out. So now, using a pen, We can mark where this has to go. So now there's the four dots where this relay is going to go. We're pretty much going to mount this dead in the middle. I think that'll work good for this. So now all we have to do now is drill the holes. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take some screws and we'll mount these up through the bottom and then they'll this is where the relay board will mount into so let's drill these out now i'm using a brad point drill which if you don't know what that is it's basically a drill bit but it's got a tiny little point at the end so that way it's a little bit harder for the drill bit to wander when you've started up because it's already dug in Okay, so we now have a board, or a project case rather, with four holes drilled in it. Let's get our sacrificial wood out of the way. Peel away the painter's tape, and here's the holes. So what we're going to do is we're gonna, now going to take these screws, and we're going to put... And we're actually going to use a nut. We're actually going to secure this right on here with a nut. Okay, we now have the bottom of the project case with the four screws in here. And hopefully I, my drill bit didn't wander, so this will just flip, slip right on here. Okay, so now that's holding, it's a little crooked. <laughs> it's uh, now holding the relay board. Now there's not enough room here because of these, these terminals right here, these terminal posts. Um, to fit a nut over the screw, but I'm not worried about that. 
because this project case is only about point, uh, it, the specs say it's 0.9 inches high. So that pretty much means it's about as tall as this relay board. So once it's on here, there's going to be no room for this to, to really move around. The top, this will lock it into place. Okay, so that's all done. This is the bottom of the project case. We've got the relay board in here. So now what we need to do is we need to wire all this up. So we're going to take our project wire and we'll strip the ends of it. And the first thing we'll do is we'll get it set up so it can apply the power, okay, to this power sensor. Actually, we're going to use this for the power. Use this to the power and then this will go to the motion sensor. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off these two data cables because we're not going to be sending data back and forth over this cable. We're only going to be using it for power. You're probably wondering why we had a jump scene there. And that's because I did, I ran into a small problem while I was putting these wires into these terminals. Uh, the power terminals uh, on the relay board have to hold power for two things. They have to hold the power not only coming into the relay, but also going out to the motion sensor. And as I was putting, you know, I twisted the ends of the wires together and I was putting them in here. But let me see if I can show you guys. They're, they're pretty small holes. There are screws on top here, but these terminal connectors aren't really made to be in, in, a, in a heavy environment. You know, they're pretty much made to stay put and you don't bother it. You know, if you're working with Halloween, you're moving props around, things like that. Uh, I was a little afraid that the connectors would come out and since they're power, I didn't want them coming out and flopping around, grounding and shorting it out. So what I did off camera is I took our relay and I soldered in the power connectors to the two cables so they're not going anywhere okay so we can put this on here yeah they're they're not going anywhere all right so here's what we did we have the power which is this white wire here okay this is going to be into our wall wart or a power pack, with however you want to power this. It's coming into the relay boards to, to power this to the positive and the negative. And then off of that positive and negative is another cable that goes off, okay, and is going to power our motion sensor. And the third wire in this cable is going to come back and that's what's going to activate the relay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take the motion sensor and we'll, we'll hook that up. Before we hook up the motion sensor, I want to talk a little bit about the, the case that I made for this. It is 3D printed. Um, I'll put, for those of you guys who are lucky enough to have a 3D printer, I'll put a link to Thingiverse where my design for this is up there. Uh, this is basically a real simple box. Okay, It has a hole here where the, the motion sensor goes right into there but if you notice you know you put it in there this still flops around and it can come back out so what I did is I designed some grooves in here where a little wall goes behind it it also has it's also designed it so it's got a cutout for the wires for the motion sensor to come out the back and this slides right down in there now this keeps the motion sensor right where it's supposed to be like I said, there's a hole right back here where the wire is going to come out, okay? Like I said, I'll put a link to that down below. So that's what we're going to use for the motion sensor. So let's, let's wire this up. So we take one of our black three conductor wires, we run it through the back of the case for the motion sensor, and we brought it out into here, okay? And then using what's called our DuPont connectors, which are just basically those headers that go on the pins, I put this on here. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can just take these wires, but you know, bare them out, 
and you can solder them on here okay but I, I'm lucky enough to have a DuPont crimper and some connectors so I did that so all we have to do is power it like here because remember there's you know positive on one side negative on the other in the middle is the sense wire so we're going to bring that into our case we take our wall bring this down here now the other reason I designed it like this if you notice there's two potentiometers on this motion sensor uh, again, I apologize if you've heard this speech before in the other videos. One is how sensitive the motion detector is, whether it can go down all the way down to the 3 meters, which is basically 9 feet, or it can go all the way out to 21 feet. I have it turned down so anything uh, within 3 meters is going to activate it. The other switch is the delay, which means uh, once it's activated, how long does it delay before you can activate it again? I have it at 3 seconds. You can move it all the way up. I think it goes all the way up to like five minutes. But we want it down our, as low as we can because once somebody activates it, the next person comes by, activates it again. But you can play around and adjust those. And that's why I have the top like this. So you can easily get into it and adjust it. And here is the slide top for the motion sensor case. So now it's a one nice self-contained unit. So at this point, we have the motion sensor hooked up. We have the power hooked up. I told you this is a real simple project. It, you know, uh, the only thing we have to do now is this is this is these are the three conductors for the relay that make the switch contact. Like I said there's the common here, normally open and normally closed. So we're going to take another set of the black conductor wire. And we're going to connect it onto here, okay? And then we'll, we'll have this end over here, and I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do with that on the other end. So let's hook this up. Now, I couldn't use just two of these wires, since mostly what we're going to do is a normally open. And when the relay gets activated, we want it to close the switch. But just in case I should need in the future, want to use the normally closed feature, not the normally open, but the normally closed feature, I'm going to hook all three wires up. And how the scheme I'm going to use for that is I'm going to use black goes to the common. And we'll tighten that down. And since red is the most common we use for the normally open, I'm going to use red and put that in at the normally open terminal. Now you're probably wondering, if I was so worried about the other wires coming loose on this end, why am I not on this end? Well, normally anything you're going to be doing with this wire isn't going to have power, so if these come out and flap around, they shouldn't short out. Uh, the other thing I want to keep in mind is I want this to be able to be used or, or serviceable by uh, who's ever building this. So, you know, this is about, I think, two feet, this cable I've got here. It's going to go out to uh, whatever prop, whatever prop we're going to have. Um, but you may want something longer. So I wanted to be able to make you easily be able to modify this to put a longer cable in here. And that's why I am just using... the screw terminals here and I'm going to put the yellow wire of this three conductor wire in the normally closed one which I said we were very rarely very rarely used okay since I'm showing you pretty much how to do this with you know a, like a spear Halloween prop with a trigger me or a motor I'm going to expose some ends here and we're just going to put this on a 1 8 plug and I'm going to show you how that works so that's what we're going to do right now is we're just going to expose the three conductors in here
Now you have to be very careful when you're taking off this outer cover because you don't want to go through and cut the three wires that are inside this, this covering. Here's the three conductors. The yellow, which is the normally open one, or the normally closed rather. We're not going to be using that, so all we really need is the black and the white here. So we're going to take this and we're just going to strip off the ends. And since this is just a switch, there's no power involved, it doesn't really matter. There is a positive and a negative on here. This is a, what they call a positive tip. So that means the tip of this, if you put the positive in the terminal with the plus, which is the positive, that means you'll get positive voltage out of here at the tip. It doesn't really matter for us because we're it's just a switch. It's not containing power. Tighten it down. Do the same for this. Okay, so let's take now we're going to modify this case a little bit so the wires can come in and out. So what we're going to do is cut here, cut here, here, cut here, cut here. Okay. So now we've got, now we got, listen to my English anymore. Now we have some holes at each end. The one's wider, that's for these two connectors over here, or these two wires, and one over here. So now this whole unit is self-contained. And I like using a black project box because it's easier to hide in the props. I would like to have gotten this power cable on black, but they didn't have it. All they had it was in white, so that's how we'll live. So here's what we have so far. Get some of the wires organized. We have the white power cable, okay, which goes to the wall ward or power pack, whichever you want, whatever gives five volts. Remember, you only want five volts. You don't want anything more than that. And then we have this other black cable here that goes out to our motion sensor. Okay. And the other end of the box, it's what's going to activate the switch. Right now we have a 1 8 a mono 1 8 plug that would go into a trigger port. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set something up right now so I can show you how this is going to trigger. So hold on, we'll be right back. Okay, I don't have any Spirit Halloween props here. So what I did is I took off the 1 8 uh, mono plug and what I did is I hooked up a 12 volt uh, LED bulb uh, with a 12 volt power supply so I'm going to make the uh, relay make the connection for the 12 volts to this so here is the I gotta be real careful because this is pretty sensitive here is the motion sensor so when I put my hand in front of the motion sensor it should trigger this and and here we go lights up now if you had that with the plug in there into the trigger me sensor of your, or trigger me port of your Spirit Halloween prop or some other props that have the 1 8 uh, try me plug, it would activate the prop. You know, we'll do this again. There you go. That's it for this really simple Halloween prop controller or if used for anything else. The real basic components, motion sensor, relay board in here, some wire, and that's it. You've now turned something into B2.
being motion controlled. So there you have it. I thought this was fairly simple, you know, but you know, if I forgot something or I confused you on something, just leave a note below and I'll get back to you. Uh, I think this is going to add a lot of uh, capabilities to your props, uh, not only your store-bought ones, but the ones you make yourself at home with some motors and and some lights. Uh, if there's, if you found this video was helpful, uh, press the like button. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, I'm going to you know until Halloween comes out and passes, I'm going to try and do a Halloween prop a week. So hit the subscribe button to catch them, and be sure to hit the bell so you get notified when they come out. Uh, so that's it for today's prop. You got questions? Let me know. Until then, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave, and I'll see you at our next project.